Hi and welcome back. Today, today I'm going to be painting a really easy um, loose watercolour seascape suitable for beginners or intermediates. Um, I'm going to paint the sky wet in wet. I'm using my large Chinese Haki brush but you can use any large wash brush. I'm wetting the paper down to about two thirds of the way down um, the page for the sky. I'm using a piece of Milford 100% um, cotton paper. My board is at an angle of about 45 degrees and my paper is taped to my board. Using my large Haki brush, I'm mixing up a, a nice rich mixture of Prussian blue, Payne's grey and um, burnt umber. Fairly unevenly on the brush and thickly spread across the top of the page. And now I've added a brush full of water. And you can see that the paint is beginning to run down. So I'm going to just keep sweeping my brush across in horizontal strokes as it runs down and then turn and tilt it to stop it running down quite so much. Once um, that flooding has stopped and my paint has changed direction is in, and now is flowing in this direction, using my brush I'll feather through uh, and just change the look of the directions of the paint and the brush strokes a little more until I like the look of it. This also will give the paint just a chance to just settle slightly so it won't run down quite so much. I'm quite happy with that. I think that looks quite nice. Um, now I want to put in a very simple foreground. First of all, I'll run a clean, damp, small harky brush, any, any medium brush will do, a flat brush, across underneath where my paint is running down. That will just encourage my paint to run down a little bit further as well keeping it running down and almost sort of disappearing in this kind of graduated wash. So the distant sky is really pale. Now without adding any extra water or paint, I'm drawing my brush across the foreground to just brush the paper and create this sort of pale dry brush effect for my beach, my low tide beach. This will stop the paint from moving around anymore. Um, so I'll lay it flat and then leave it to dry and then come back and just put a few details in. It's nice and dry and now to finish the painting off I'm just going to add a few seagulls standing on the wet sand um, and then put in a slightly stronger horizon line and, and paint in the sea a little bit more. I'm using my small calligraphy brush um, here, it's got a nice point so any brush with a nice fine point will do. And I'm going to paint my gull simply by painting a sort of silhouette of the gull, the shape of its body and its tail, um, and then a couple of little legs. And rather than painting in the head, I'm going to suggest the head by just adding in a dot, a dot for an eye and a little line for a beak for each one of these gulls. And I'm hoping that will just give me a nice loose impression of seagulls rather than looking sort of overly detailed or overly fussy. You could always pencil these in first if you're unsure, um, very lightly, just to make sure you like the position of them and the shapes or practice them on a piece of scrap paper first, but they're quite simple. It's just getting the shape right. Um, this kind of sort of a leaf shape, I suppose, for the body um, coming up to the neck and then just the simplest indications of legs, eye and beak, and of course the tail. 
I've overlapped these two here and that looks quite effective rather than just a sort of a row of single birds. I'm not going to paint that many, I just want to keep this fairly simple, fairly stylized, but fairly loose. Uh, something that um, I think beginners would be very pleased with the results of a painting like, like this. Um, without very much work at all, it's just a bit of practice with the wet in wet techniques and then um, getting the shapes right for these little birds. I'm keeping them all roughly the same size. These ones are all going to face in the same sort of direction. And then I'm going to do this one more that's facing the opposite direction, but still painting them more or less the same. I mean, a couple of them are slightly further back than others, but that should all, they should all sort of look um, okay and grounded on the sand in a minute when I put the shadows in. So I've swapped now to a number two rigger brush and using the same mixture, which is all three colours, Payne's Grey, Burnt Umber and Prussian Blue. Um, I'm putting in sort of fine horizontal lines to build up a sort of shadow or reflection in the wet sand underneath each bird and drawing out some sort of horizontal um, lines to give the indication of the wet sand. I think that'll just about do for now. I'll put a bit more in, but first I want to get um, the distant horizon line in. Um, I've mixed up a very pale mixture of Prussian blue. It's very watery and I'm carefully drawing it across the horizon line. I just need a bit more paint in my three quarter inch flat brush. Then I'm going to bring this line of C all the way across horizontally, keeping it nice and flat. I can straighten it out a little bit if it's in a minute, if it's got a bit sort of uh, wobbly, but then using side to side strokes and leaving gaps of the um, first wash, the pale and in some places unpainted paper showing through. Um, I'm just using these side to side motions and the pale paint to suggest the sea in the distance and the waves, um, just gentle low tide waves. I'm just gently carefully tidying up my horizon to make sure it's fairly soft uh, but nice and straight. Now I've um, picked up a little bit of Payne's Grey and mixed it into that same Prussian blue mixture and I'm dropping in um, still fairly watery, but a little bit darker, greyer accents into the waves that I have um, painted. And then bringing, bringing that brushwork down again further, feathering across. I'm going to bring it all the way down, those horizontal lines, leaving lots of the unpainted paper and the under underwash showing to sort of frame around the birds and between them. And I've loaded my brush up, the tips of my brush up again with a little bit more of the watery uh, Prussian blue and Payne's grey and darkening up the horizon line on this side on the right and just putting some of the blue 
and grey underneath the birds, um, slightly heavier, coming down over the tape on the right corner to balance up the composition. And I think that's it. I think I'm nearly done. I think I'm just going to pick up some slightly stronger Payne's Grey and run that underneath each bird um, and in a few lines here and there just to strengthen up that shadow area. And that's it. It's as simple as that. I mean, I'm thinking that I might put some birds flying in the sky, but I'm not too sure. So what I'm going to do is take the tape off and have a look and see how it looks with its clean border. And that gives it a more finished look. It almost looks as if it's framed. So then you can see if it looks OK. And I think that looks fine, but I am going to put a few small seagulls, distant ones, three of them I think, in the sky. Just here on this side I think. So I'm using my rigger brush and that, that same mixture but not quite as dark. Getting slightly smaller so that they're at different distances. It's as if these seagulls are flying in um, to join the group on the sand. And I think that just finishes it off quite nicely. It's a really simple painting with good practice for painting a wet in wet sky and good practice for the dry brush and the horizontal um, marks um, for the sea and the sand, leaving plenty of negative space um, to suggest reflections on the sand and the sea in the distance. And also it's good practice uh, painting the little loose birds as well. So thanks so much for watching. I hope it was useful. Please um, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And thank you so much to my lovely Patreon group who support this channel. I'll see you again soon. Bye.